Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the cardiac cycle. And when I say the cardiac cycle, I'm talking about all of the events that happen with one complete heartbeat. So we're going to go into the details of this. There are a lot of details. But we're going to try to break it down one step at a time. To make it easy, and fun as possible. So let's get right into it. Here we are looking at the entire cardiac cycle. We have this graph here that shows a number of details and that makes it as easy as possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything and break it down into one section at a time. So I want you to follow me on this. Like I said, we're talking about one complete heartbeat. And with one complete heartbeat, I'm talking about the contraction and the re relaxation of the atria and the contraction and the relaxation of the ventricles. Anytime I say contraction, I'm referring to a systole, which is the same as contraction. And when I say relaxation, I'm referring to a diastole. So what we're going to do is first, I'm going to describe what all these things show and then we're going to take it one stage at a time. Here we're looking at the phonocardiogram. In other words, we're looking at the sounds that we hear. When the heart beats, when we go through the different stages of the heart, then here we're looking at the electrocardiogram. Then we're looking at the ventricular volume. In other words, we're looking at the amount of blood, the volume of the blood in the ventricles. And specifically, we're looking at the left ventricle. Then here, we're looking at the ventricular pressure, so that's the pressure in the left ventricle. Here, we're looking at the atrial pressure, so the pressure in the atria. And the last, but not the least, we're looking at the aortic pressure, and that's the pressure in the aorta, which is this structure right here, which sends the blood from the heart to the rest of the body. So that's an overview of what we're going to be looking at. Now we're going to take it one section at a time. This is a lot of details and it summarizes the entire cardiac cycle. So we're going to take it one step at a time and get a good understanding of what is going on. Actually, I'm going to start right in this section here. And the reason why I'm going to start here is because here we have showing the PQRS complex and the T wave, this is one full cycle. And this is one full cycle, but this is labeled differently, so we're going to look at that, and we're gonna start by looking at the electrocardiogram. First thing we're going to see is we have the P wave. And if, the, if you remember from the previous episode, the P wave represents the atrial depolarization. So we're talking about the depolarization of the atria. Once this happens, that is going to cause the atria to contract. So let's jump up here and look at the atrial pressure. And you can see here, right after the P wave, we get this, we get this increase in pressure in the atria. That is when the atria are contracting. And that is why we're, we are seeing that increasing pressure as a result of the depolarization of the atria. So once again, the P wave represents the atrial depolarization. That is going to cause the atrial contraction, or as you can see here, atrial systole. What that is going to do, if that's going to push the last bit of blood from the atria, which is this part over here, from the atria into the ventricle. So we're going from the left atria to the left ventricle when that contracts, and that is why we see the quick increase in the amount of blood in the left ventricle. So we get an increase in ventricle volume right after the atrial contracts. So we've described this section here, which is the atrial systole, and then after the P wave, we then get the QRS complex. Once again, we've covered this in a previous episode. When we talk about the EKG, the QRS complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles. And of course, once the ventricles depolarizes, that's going to cause the ventricles to start to contract. 
Just like after atrial polarization, we get atrial contraction. Now after ventricular depolarization, we also get ventricular contraction. So that is where we're starting this phase of systole, where the ventricles are contracting. However, there is this short period here. It's called isovolumic or isovolumetric contraction. And that is when these valves, the atrioventricular valve and the semilunar valve are closed as there's a buildup in impression. You can see that there's a significant increase in pressure here during the stage of isovolumetric contraction. Of course, the volume of blood in the ventricles are staying the same. Here you see the left ventricular volume is staying the same. At a certain point, we will have enough pressure in the ventricle to cause this semilunar valve to open so that you can pump the blood into the aorta. Now, at what point is that? Well, you can see here in the aortic pressure <clears throat> is somewhere around 80 millimeters of mer mercury. As you can see here, so once we have enough pressure to overcome the pressure in the aorta, that's going to cause the valves to open. And then the blood can send to the aorta, which can then go to the rest of the body. In the case of the ventricular volume, when those valves open and the blood leaves, that's going to cause the ventricular volume, the amount of blood in the ventricles to decrease significantly. Why? Because the ventricles are contracting. We're sending the blood out to the body so that it can go to the muscles, into the organs that need the blood and oxygen. We're sending the blood out to the body so that it can go to the muscles, into the organs that need blood and oxygen. Now that the good stuff, and that is the result of the ventricles contracting. So you can see the increasing pressure, the blood being ejected. So you can see the decrease in the ventricular volume. And that happens right after the QRS complex, which is the depolarization of the ventricles. So that's far we've looked at the P wave, atrial depolarization causing atrial systole or atrial contraction. Then we looked at the QRS complex, which then causes the ventricular contraction and increase in pressure. Here you have isovolumetric contraction, where the valves are closed and no blood is exiting the ventricles. And then you have the semilunar valves opening when the pressure in the ventricles can overcome the amount of pressure in the aorta. And that causes ventricular ejection. You can see here that ejection, that means the blood is being ejected from the ventricles and you can see there's a significant decrease in ventricular volume. Then we have this T wave, represents the repolarization of the ventricles. And when the ventricles repolarizes, that's also going to cause the ventricles to relax so that you can see now the amount of pressure in the ventricles is going down significantly. The same thing is going to happen on the opposite end where we have the isovolumetric relaxation. And that's because the valves are closed, the pressure is decreasing, so you're gonna get a significant drop in pressure. While the volume of the blood in the ventricles is staying constant, then once that's done, the ventricles are relaxed. The atria are also relaxed. Then we get the ventricular filling where blood is being sent back. You can see here, during the relaxation, this is where the filling happens. Blood is coming back from the body. Blood is coming back from the, from the lungs and entering the ventricles. So the ventricular volume is going to start Going up again, it's going to increase as you see here, the full thing increases until we get that P wave again, which causes atrial depolarization. And the cycle continues. Now there's one thing we didn't look at it yet, and that's the phonocardiogram. And you can see here, we have a signal here, signal here, a third of signal here, and it's actually a fourth signal. And what this represents would be the sound of the heartbeat. 
When you listen to the heartbeat, usually you hear a lab dub sound. Lab dub, lab dub. And what that refers to would be the first and the second sound that you see here. Yes, there's a third sound and there's a fourth sound. But you don't hear those because they're not strong sounds. The two main sounds that you hear are the first and the second sound. And what we have is the first two closing of these valves. So at this point, after the QRS complex, where the ventricles depolarizes and, and the ventricles start to contract, when they start to contract, that's going to cause an increase in the force, closing the valve, closing this atrioventricular valve. And when the valve shuts, you're going to hear the first sound, the lab sound. And then here, where the ventricles relaxes, after sending all of those bloods out, you're going to get a closing of the semi-lunar valve. And you're going to hear the second sound, which is the dub sound. So you get a lab dub, lab dub, lab dub. And that is the heartbeat that you hear. This third sound here is when the ventricles are being filled. And as the ventricles are being filled, there's going to be some turbulence in there. And that's going to cause a third sound. But you don't hear that as much as because there are no valves that are closing or anything of that sort. It's just a blood that's flowing. The fourth sound that there is represents the filling of the atria with blood. And of course, the atria are significantly smaller than the ventricles. That sound is going to be even softer. So you don't even see it in this phonocardiogram. But this shows the entire cardiac cycle. I hope that now that we've gone through all of these details, this entire graph does not look as intimidating as it might have looked when we first started.